thank you for coming and joining us for worship today. We want to greet those who are taking part in this service today online, so thank you for joining us. We're going to try to do things as, uh, as normally as we would if the room was filled with people as, as we would like to have it on Sunday mornings. And yet, under the circumstances, we are going to do things uh, a little bit differently here today out of necessity. But we'll share those things with you as we go. It's our practice here at St. John to share the peace with each other. And so we are going to be shaking hands, but I will invite you who are here with us this morning to stand and just turn uh, with people uh, to, to the people next to you and share the peace. If you're at home with your family, you can do the same. And we'll just uh, take a few moments and we can say the peace of the Lord be with you. So let's do that right now. Please turn with me to hymn 425. 
It's on page nine in your order of service. And together we sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open your eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon from the prison of those who sit in darkness. In the darkness of the world around us, and amid our own blindness to his will and ways, God calls us to confess our sins. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We pause for silent reflection. God, our 
our Heavenly Father, we remain in darkness without your light, and we walk in blindness if you do not lead. Even in our times of comfort, in the darkness and times of willful blindness, you shine your light of truth and call us your children of light, that we may see and live in your grace. Help us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for all your blessings, and with eyes of faith, look to you always that we serve you and others in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lenten season is one of repentance and renewal. And today, through God's Word, we recognize the times of sinful darkness and spiritual blindness. Paul reminds us of the light that exposes our sin, but the greater call is to walk in the light of Christ. In the Holy Gospel, a man blind from birth is healed by Jesus, but experiences an even greater sight of light, always from the darkness of unbelief, away from the darkness of unbelief. In the season of Lent, even in times of darkness, we continue to follow Christ to the cross as we hear his word and we, we rejoice in the light of truth. I invite Ella to come up and share our epistle reading today. Today's reading from the Gospel is written in John chapter 9. We begin at verse 1. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go. Wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before him as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees asked him again how he had received his sight, and he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, 
for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such things? And there was division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that he is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as of this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it ever been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that he had been cast out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees heard him say these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We're going to sing together our next hymn, so please turn to Hymn number four, uh, 849 is on page 10 in your order of service. We sing together, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
give thanks to you that we can be here in this place, that we can gather even in our homes, and that we can worship you wherever we are. Come and be with us, Lord, as we listen. We pray that you would open our hearts, that we may see you as you really are, and that by faith we would claim you. Thank you, Lord, for this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favorite days of the year is a day that happened just a few days ago, and that is the spring equinox. Anybody know what day it was? It was actually Thursday, this past Thursday, March the 19th. And, and what that simply means, as we know, is that it happens to be at the time of year when you have roughly, here in the Northern Hemisphere, equal amounts of darkness and light. But the reason that I especially love this day is because it tells me that from this point on and over the next few months, that the amount of daylight is only going to be getting longer and longer. I love this time of year. And yet with everything that's been going on in recent days and weeks, it may seem that in a sense things have been going in the opposite direction. And what I'm referring to, of course, is this idea that it seems like things are getting darker rather than lighter. And I can imagine that you know why I say that. With everything going on surrounding coronavirus and the world seemingly shutting down, you kind of get this sense that people are afraid, people are worried, we're wondering what's going to happen next. And for that reason, it could seem to us as though things are getting darker. And at the same time, what I want to share with you today is that as people who are redeemed by Jesus Christ, we have really good news, even on a day like this. I say that because of this, that we have a God who is perfectly suited for dealing with the darkness in our lives. And I think, for instance, what the prophet Isaiah says hundreds of years before Jesus comes along, he says this, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. And what that means, in so many words, is that Jesus Christ, as we say in the liturgy of the church, that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can overcome. I think that's really important news at a time like this. And it's also the kind of message that we see being shared with us in this gospel reading today in John chapter 9, where Jesus takes this man who could not see, and he gives him the gift of sight. And I want you to notice carefully how I said that and how I didn't. I said that he gave him the gift of sight, and notice that I didn't say he restored to this man his sight. He didn't restore it to him because this was something that this man had never had before. Imagine what it would be like if you had never been able to see. This man did not know what the experience of seeing was. And so what Jesus did in his life that day was he created in him. It was a creative miracle that he did in giving him the sight so that we truly could say that this man's life was never the same after that again. And in fact, the people who knew him really weren't even sure if it was the same God because he was so different now that Jesus had healed him. And yet as wonderful as that miracle of sight was, that gift of being able to see physically really was for this man, what I wanna to say to you today is that Jesus did for him something even more important and profound than that. And, and that was that he gave him the gift of spiritual sight, which is to say that Jesus gave him also the ability to see by faith who Jesus really is, that Jesus was the Son of God. And, and the reason why that's even more important than physical sight is that, as marvelous as that gift was, what Jesus now did 
was that he was enabling this man to see Jesus, not just for time here in this world, but for all of eternity in heaven. And you could say there's no greater gift than that. This gift by which God gives us forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life in Jesus, his son. That's what he's done for you, and that's what he's done for me. Every person who believes in Christ has those gifts. But that also is something that reminds me of a great tragedy here in this world. And it's this, that there are so many people who still do not see Jesus in this way. And we see in this reading today in John chapter 9 that there were many on that day who also could not see Jesus in faith. And perhaps surprisingly, of all people, it's the religious leaders who don't see Jesus. It's this group of Pharisees who may have had perfectly good physical sight. But when it came to seeing Jesus for who he really is as the Son of God, they could not see him. They were blind to that. And so it is with many people still today that they may go around life with 20-20 vision. They may see physically perfectly well. And yet when it comes to seeing who Jesus really is as the Son of God, they just don't see it. They're blind to it. And there's a couple of reasons in particular as to why that is. One of the reasons why people are spiritually blind is that the enemy of our souls, the devil, has made it so that they cannot see Christ. And this is what Paul is referring to in the New Testament when he says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Sometimes we have people in our lives and we may maybe have talked with them about Jesus, and yet there's part of us that just is amazed as to why they don't see in Christ what we see in him. And we may have, so to speak, twisted their arm. We've tried to do all sorts of things to persuade them and, and help them to believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. And it's just like there's this wall up, and they do not see him as we see him. And one of the reasons for that can be that the enemy works very hard in the lives of people to keep those blinders on so that they really don't recognize in Jesus the Son of God. That's one reason. But there's yet another reason as to why people often will not see Christ as Savior and Lord. And perhaps it's surprising, but it's simply this. It's sometimes because people don't want to see him in that sort of way. There's something in us as sinful human beings that doesn't want to see Jesus as the Son of God because if we see him in that way, we begin immediately to recognize that he really has authority over us. And let's admit that there's, there's something in us as sinful people that doesn't want anyone else to have authority over us, right? Because if Jesus has authority over us, if he's the Son of God, if he really is who he claimed to be, then that means then we should probably be obeying him and doing what he says and, and believing the things that he wants us to believe. And so often we don't want to do that. We want to do what we want to do, right? We want to be Lord in our lives. We don't want to have another Lord. And so there's part of our sinful flesh that cries out against that idea and in so many words, refuses to see Jesus as he really is. And that's why as people who have come to know Christ and have had our eyes open, that's why we praise God, because he has done an absolute miracle in us. The greatest miracle that anyone can experience is what he enabled that man to do in John 9, to see him as the Son of God. It's the same miracle that we receive when we come to faith in Christ. And what that tells us is that no amount of, of spiritual arm twisting or persuasion on our part will be able to open the eyes of other people so that they see Jesus as the Christ. Only God can do that. And we praise him today because he can and does do that. Now, how does he do that? He does that 
through his word. He does that as people spend time with God. He does that as people spend time with other people. And so let's think of it in this way. That, that one of the ways that, that people came to know that God is real, for instance, in the Old Testament, was an experience that they had with Moses, the Old Testament prophet. I shared this with you here at St. John not too long ago. They were told in the Old Testament that Moses, as he was leading the people through the wilderness, would at times go into this thing called the tent of meeting. And there we're told that he would meet face to face with the Lord. And what would happen when Moses came out of that meeting with the Lord? What would happen to his face? He would be glowing. And people would look at him and they would see the radiance of God's glory on his face because he had been in the presence of God. And it was actually something that was, was really unnerving to people who would see this. And so Moses took to covering his face with a veil so that they wouldn't have to look at the glory that they saw on Moses' face. And you might say that in a way, as we spend time with God in his word, in prayer, as we open up the scriptures and we read it, or as we listen to a message like you're listening to it today, that in a way, Jesus who comes and lives inside of us begins to shine his glory through us so that people will see something different in you and in me. And we don't do that perfectly, and we do fall short, but people begin to see Jesus in us as we interact with them, as we do things differently than other people normally would do, as, as we love other people, as we pray for other people, they begin to see Christ in us. And something also wonderful happens when we get together with other Christian people, and, and we interact with them, and we see Christ at work in their lives, and we see, in a way, Jesus at work in them, and that's a marvelous thing. But of course, given the circumstances with the coronavirus nowadays, it's also a challenging thing. It's difficult to get together with each other because we're basically told we shouldn't be doing that. And so today we're also thankful for this technology that we share, the ability to see this on recording. I mentioned this during the announcements as well, that one of the ways that we're, we're trying to uh, overcome this social distancing that is necessary right now is, is through things like online media. And so we're gonna be sending out information in emails so that people who wanna participate, for instance, in the prayer meeting on Tuesday morning can do that. We're gonna be most likely using Zoom video to do that. Also the same with the Bible study. If you'd like to participate in that, you'll be able to do that on Zoom video. And so we are thankful as we think about these, these roadblocks that prevent us from getting together at this time, that there are ways that we can overcome that and be encouraged, even at a time like this when things seem so dark. What that tells us is that in spite of everything that is taking place at a time like this, we have reason to be thankful. We really do. That may seem strange, but it's also what God's Word talks about. I think of what Paul says when he writes to the church in Thessalonica, he says, give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances. I don't know about you, but in recent days, I don't know that I've especially felt thankful. And yet God in his word really encourages us to do that because even when times are dark, we as God's people really and truly can find reasons for which to be thankful. You might be thankful today that you're relatively healthy, which is no small thing nowadays. You may be thankful today that in, in spite of perhaps being out of work or finding work very difficult, that you have what you need, food and clothing and shelter. And we could go on and on. Above all, we are thankful today that in this darkness of the world around us, that we have our Savior, that he is with us, and in fact, as God's people, what we can say, what we can believe is this, that as the world in which we live seems to get darker, the light of Christ seems to get all the brighter. And that we as, as God's people in the church have something all the more valuable to share with those around us 
especially at times when things seem so bleak. So we really can be thankful today. And that's what we do as we close in prayer today. Lord, we are thankful that at this time you are with us, that not only have you given us the gift of spiritual sight, but that you have also given us everything else that we need. We thank you, Jesus, that we have come to see you for who you really are, that you are the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And we pray, Lord, that other people would see Jesus in us as we interact with them. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be reaching out to others at this time, checking in with others, seeing if there are ways in which we can serve them in the name of Christ. And we pray, Lord, in all of this, of this, that you would be glorified. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take this time now to confess our faith together. If you're following along in the order of service, we're at the top of page 5. Let's speak the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, shine your light of mercy and grace into our darkened hearts of sin and eyes blinded to your will and ways so that we know the fullness of your forgiveness, life, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing, Lord, shine your light of peace and healing to all who seek relief for the sick and dying, for those troubled physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally and for the grieving and the dying, that your comfort be known. We pray especially, Father, this morning for those who are dealing with the coronavirus, who are sick because of it, and those who have lost loved ones because of it. We also lift before you, Lord, those whom we know personally who are in need of your prayer today. We do pray for Aaron Agor, Abby Barrett, Miles Bliss, Steve Cameron, Beverly Chamberlain, Deb Curtis, Angelo Figueroa, Ron Fleming, Marie Ginther, Arlene Graham, Marty Graham. We pray as well for Chuck and Jackie Holler, Al and Marge Jennings, Lila Jane Johnson, Susan Johnson, Chris Clefane, Ashley Labrevo, Sugar Newman, Ron O'Hart, Michelle Palmer, Paul Ritzenthaler, Logan and Xavier Summer, Christopher Zimmerman, also those whom we name before you at this time in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord of all nations, shine your light to all places in this world and to the leaders of cities, states, and countries, that your light guide and direct them so that peace be had and justice faithfully served. Give courage and diligence to all who work to defend liberties and life, and to those who speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, shine your light upon all who have, who have enabled who are unable to speak and proclaim your word. Be with our congregation that we remain united in truth, love, faith, and service. Give courage to live as your witnesses 
that many who remain in darkness rejoice in the light of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all seasons, in this season of Lent, shine your light upon us as we examine ourselves, see our sins, and know our need for a Savior. As we continue to follow Christ to the cross, draw our hearts and our minds, and our minds to you and the joys that await us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And we bring before you, Lord, at this time, other prayers and concerns of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At what, at what time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The Lord bless you and keep you. I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they had not known. I will guide them. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. These are the things I do, and that I do not forsake them. As we finish our service here today, uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for viewing this online. If there are certain needs that you have, please feel free to get in touch with us here at the church office or contact me, and we will look for ways to be able to be of assistance to you. We're going to close our service today by singing the hymn that's on pages 11 and 12 in your order of service. It's hymn number 411 in the hymnal. I want to walk as a child of light. Let's sing. <coughs>